Join me now is Right on Crime Executive Director and former U.S. Attorney Brett Tolman. I, you know, this is an extraordinary case, and it just emphasizes what we are seeing time and again, not just in New York, but in Los Angeles, in San Francisco, in Milwaukee, uh, in Portland, Oregon. The innocent are the ones that are charged. The guilty, the, the violent criminals, are the ones who get off scot-free. It, it just is justice turned upside down in this country. Well, you know, the county attorney's main responsibility, his, his very existence is to safeguard communities, you know, ensure public safety. The policies that are implemented are, are done under the guise of criminal justice reform. But, David, you can reform and change the criminal justice system in many ways without compromising public safety. Here you have a, a decision making that is going on in which you have uh, individuals being released. Uh, that are dangerous, and you have individuals that they are refusing to charge who are committing atrocious crimes. You take the victim in this case. He's, he was currently out um, on parole for assaulting a police officer. So these, this is backwards law and order, and it, it is injustice and not a justice system that's trying to preserve the safety of the community. And, you know, Bragg, the, the DA, again, a Soros-funded DA, and we've seen Soros-funded DAs all over America doing this kind of thing, uh, he, he is constantly downgrading a lot of these charges. In fact, the, the, I believe it was the second day he was in office, he sent out a memo to his staff saying, we are going to be downgrading a lot of the charges that used to be uh, for, for violent crimes, et cetera. Uh, but in this case, he upcharged he, he, to, to second-degree murder a clear case of self-defense. I mean, there may be questions about manslaughter. I don't know the details criminally, but the bottom line is he upcharged while with the real violent criminals, he's downcharged. I mean, it's, it is absolute madness. I, what is his reasoning? The rationale for the decision to charge Mr. Alba is puzzling. And, and not only that, if you take what self-defense is, in its essence, what you have to show is that the individual was using equal force to what was being used against them. Now, some might say, well, he had a knife. That's not the analysis. The, the analysis is that there was an intruder that was in a place he was not allowed to, to be. He went behind the desk. He's violently confronting Mr. Alba. The size of the of the aggressor is an important factor. The location of the aggressor um, is important. There are many factors, and in this case, you know, I can only hope that a jury looking at this might might assess it more thoughtfully than the DA has in this particular case. Well, the DA is 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 getting a lot of criticism from quarters in in New York, not from the governor, who has the ability to fire fire him if she wanted to. Uh, but, but here's what the New York Post said in an editorial. They said, what Alvin Bragg, the Manhattan DA, is practicing isn't justice, it's madness. Police are villains, criminals are heroes, and victims are told to accept their fate. Jose Alba needs to be free. Alvin Bragg needs to be out of office. I think that's the only message, and it is happening. You had the San Francisco DA, another Soros-funded DA, uh, kicked out of office. It looks like it may happen to Gascon, the DA in Los Angeles. There's a recall going on. Hopefully it is successful. But I, I don't see any other way out, do you, than just getting rid of these DAs? No, in fact, I mean, this is why, you know, politics should stay out of decision making and especially prosecutorial discretion. And, you know, I hope that they, they, they replace individuals like this with those that are going to be concerned about public safety, about improving the criminal justice system. But the reality is, think about how much damage is done until that happens. Oh, absolutely. By the way, the mayor himself, a former police officer, Mayor Adams, who's a lot of people said spoke a lot about crime but hasn't done a lot about crime since he's been in office in January, but he came out with a statement about all this. Let me roll that tape and get your reaction. Go ahead and roll it. Now it's time for the district attorney's office to make to do an investigation and the grand jury to um, go through the proceedings. Um, but. Uh, I'm, I'm just a big believer that innocent New Yorkers who are doing their job, working, it's obvious this gentleman was here, um, working, providing for his family. Now, he talks about the DA's office doing an investigation. In fact, we've had dozens of, of assistant district attorneys quit because they're so fed up with this, with this district attorney, Bragg. So 
I, I don't put any faith in an investigation coming out of this DA's office. There's nobody there to do the hard work. Well, that's right. And think about a grand jury, the old saying that they'll indict a ham sandwich. Why? Why do we say that? It's because it's the prosecution that gets to determine what the grand jury actually sees and then, then ask the grand jury to vote to indict or not. And so th this this is not meaningful layer of, of you know protection against a bad decision by the prosecutor. Well, it's a horrible decision. Thank goodness uh, Mr. Alba is out of jail, at least for now. He's on he's on parole, the parole that's that that he had to pay bail for, or excuse me, parole's the wrong word, that he, he's out on bail, bail that he had to pay for, but that so many violent cr criminals get out without paying any bail. As, as, but at least he's out. We'll, we're going to follow this very closely. And, Brett, thank you very much for your insight. I appreciate it. Good talking to you.